welcome to course on advanced geotechnical engineering module 6 in uh, on buried structures lecture 3. So in the previous lectures we have discussed about Marston's load theory for rigid and flexible pipes and different uh, trench and projection conditions. Now let us look into uh, what are the uh, requirements for the minimum cover and uh, flotation and uh, liquefaction effects on the buried pipes. So in this lecture we are going to discuss about the uh, what are the general loading conditions which are required and then minimum cover, minimum cover which is required and flotation and liquefaction effects on buried pipes. So uh, as the these pipes are subjected to uh, different types of loads one such load is uh, live load if uh, it is under installed below a railway embankment or a highway embankment is subjected to wheel loads. So as the load is transmitted down uh, the effective area increases and the pressure decreases. So uh, naturally what happens is that uh, as the load which is applied at the surface gets diminished once uh, uh, you know the uh, reaches to the top of the pipe where the pressure decreases. So Bosnick's theory can be used to calculate the pressures on the different types of loads on the embedded pipes and details of live load calculations are actually connected with the minimum cover requirement. So like we can assume that wheel load is actually you know happening on the right on the top of the pipe or at happening at a certain distance away from the pipe. So one of the predominant loads which can affect the integrity of the uh, pipes is that the live loads. So as the live load is actually transmitted down the effective area increases and uh, the pressure basically the transmitted to the pipes will decrease. But however the intensity of load transferred to the pipe due to a particular load can be calculated by using uh, Bosnick's theory which is actually there in the stress distribution uh, component of geotechnical engineering. The another uh, you know effect which is uh, need to be considered if these pipelines are installed in the seismically prone areas then the seismic loads need to be considered. So as a general the stress uh, stresses induced in pipe walls due to seismic strains are quite small and do not adversely affect the design but the design codes usually allow for an increase in the allowable stress or conversely a decrease in the load factors when seismic loads are induced uh, included in a load combination. So the buried pipes that are sized to sustain other design loads usually have sufficient strength to resist the seismic imposed stresses. But however there can be uh, some uh, uh, effects like uh, effects due to liquefaction and uh, because of the uh, or uh, flotation of the pipes so the, the, those issues need to be addressed. But as such the seismic loads if it is uh, uh, if the pipelines are passing through seismically prone areas. Uh, the adequate uh, consideration should be made to have the seismic loads. Then another uh, you know important loading consideration which uh, need to look into it is internal pressure. Uh, basically these underground pipes uh, or buried pipes they operate under basically there are two categories one is called high pressure pipes and uh, low pressure pipes. The undergrad pipe systems have to operate under varying levels of internal pressure. Uh, gravity shear lines normally operate at very fairly low internal pressures that is uh, the pressures in shear lines are very low. So they can be shear lines or can be classified as uh, low pressure uh, pipes whereas the water supply mains and industrial process pipes uh, operate under high internal pressures. That means that uh, these pipelines for uh, say cool water uh, cooling water uh, running pipelines uh, in say in power plants and all they operate under very high pressure uh, high pressures. The high pressure pipelines have to be designed for a continuous operating pressure as well as uh, you know the short term uh, transient pressure and uh, these uh, pressures also sometimes uh, because of the rapid closure of the valve or something like that there can be possibility that uh, you know the surges can actually happen or it is also called as a water hammer effect. So in a short pulse of time there can be a possibility that uh, the pressures can actually increase beyond the operating pressures. So uh, the high pressure pipelines have to be designed the high pressure pipelines have to be uh, designed for a continuous operating pressure as well as the uh, short term transient pressures and the short term transient pressures in the mean that 
uh, it can arise uh, because of a water hammer or a water surge which can actually increase uh, the pressure in the pipe uh, uh, in a short duration of a time. And uh, the internal pressure another issue is that vacuum. Uh, this uh, vacuum can actually arise uh, because of the uh, you know the closure of the walls uh, uh, of an empty pipe. So sometimes what will happen is that certain operational events may cause a temporary vacuum in the buried pipe conduits. So one need to really concern about this particular issue. In most cases the duration of application of vacuum uh, loading is extremely short and its effects on can be de delineated from other uh, live loads. The magnitude and the time variation of the uh, transients need to be considered for both positive and negative internal pressures. So uh, the one need to look into the magnitude and the time variation of the transients uh, uh, basically for both the positive and the negative uh, internal pressures. Uh, then another uh, issue is that the pipe and associated contents the effects of the dead weight of the pipe wall and the fluid carried out uh, uh, fluid carried uh, must be resisted by the structural capacity of the pipe. So the effects of the dead weight of the pipe wall and the uh, fluid carried must be resisted by the structural capacity of the pipe. In practice load from these two sources are often neglected in the design of steel or plastic pipes but accounted in the design of pre stressed and reinforced concrete pressure pipes. And, uh, concrete non pressure pipes. So for simplicity these leads are these loads are uh, to be added to the vertical soil loads keeping in mind that small magnitude of these loads. So uh, these loads are actually added to the soil loads so keeping in uh, mind of the you know as they are actually uh, the small in uh, the magnitude of this load is actually small compared to the, the soil loads. So the effect of the dead weight of the pipe wall and the fluid carried out must be resisted by the structural capacity of the pipe. So now having discussed about the different uh, loading considerations like live loads and then we also have discussed in the previous uh, 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 lectures uh, how you know the for different conditions how the soil loads uh, can be uh, you know calculated by using Marston's load theory. So in addition to that uh, uh, you know these uh, loads due to external loads due to wheel, wheel load traffic or seismic loads are due to considered. So the minimum soil cover which is very important as far as buried conduits functioning is concerned. So in the pipeline design analysis of the minimum soil cover required are essential to protect the integrity of the buried pipe under different loading and environmental conditions. In pipeline design analysis of minimum soil cover required basically are essential to protect the integrity of the buried pipe under different loading and environmental considerations. So soil is a major component of the flexible buried pipe. The soil protects the pipe by holding the pipe in shape and then in alignment. So soil basically you know helps to hold the pipe in shape and in the alignment. So the following are the analysis of the minimum soil covers are required for the protection against wheel loads, flotation, uplift and uh, some issues of frost are there but which are not discussed in this lecture. So uh, first what we do is that we will try to look into wheel loads uh, that is due to live load uh, traffic. In case if the buried conduit pipelines are there uh, which are uh, embedded in a location where there is no wheel load traffic uh, then in that case uh, this particular uh, live load issue will not arise. So in the pipeline design the analysis of minimum soil cover required are essential to protect the integrity of the buried pipe under different loading and environmental conditions. And we will try to look about the analysis of the minimum soil covers which are required for protection against the wheel loads and due to buoyancy of the pipe due to the high water table areas that is flotation and flotation and uplift and due to liquefaction. So in this particular slide case 1 where you know the minimum soil cover computation is actually shown here where wheel load W directly over the top of the pipe. So here the, the stress distribution which is actually is on the pipe where the right at the center of the pipe where the magnitude pressure is P is equal to W by 2 H square and which is actually decreases you know as the as it is going away from the uh, into the center of the wheel load and the gamma is the soil unit weight, H is the embedded depth uh, that is the cover above the pipe 
and d by 2 is the you know the at the mid height. So, h plus d by 2 is the mid height. So, you can see that sigma v is the vertical stress which is gamma into h plus uh, d by 2 that is actually acting at the side of the pipe and uh, the lateral stress uh, the resistance offered is nothing but sigma x is equal to kp into sigma y. So, this passive resistance uh, for the, this provided by the soil and the internal pressure that is p x is equal to p is actually exerted and which is countered by this passive resistance that is sigma x. So, sigma y is the vertical stress that is gamma into h plus d by 2. So, the passive resistance is nothing but k p into gamma into uh, h plus d by 2. So, this is the passive passive resistance which is the passive uh, the stress in the, the sigma sigma y sigma x in the x direction. So, this is the minimum soil cover requirement or computation for a case where the load is actually resting right on top of the pipe. Uh, we can also see that as the you know the embedded depth increases uh, the, the stress the stress magnitude keeps on decreasing because let us say that if we in this particular figure h and uh, capital H where uh, capital H is greater than H in this situation the magnitude of the uh, live loads get uh, reduced at the depth of the uh, as the depth of the backfill is increased as the depth of the backfill is increased the magnitude of the live load gets uh, uh, decreased. So, uh, in order to in the computation of this minimum soil cover and uh, if you are actually having an empty circular cross section uh, of let us say of having a diameter D capital D and uh, if is deflected into an ellipse. So, here elliptical pattern of deformation is actually shown here. So, here which actually R x and R y are the radii in x and y direction and the ratio of the radii R suffix R is equal to R y by R x. So, ratio of radii of the deformed you know cross section in the elliptical fashion it is ratio of radii is equal to R suffix R is equal to R y by R x. Uh, which uh, this ordinate is equal to b is equal to r into 1 plus d and this is equal to a is equal to r into 1 minus d. Uh, so, we can actually write ratio of r radii as uh, uh, b by a whole cube as b is equal to r into 1 plus d. So, we can write uh, you know this is something like 1 plus d cube divided by 1 minus d cube where d is nothing but the the ring deflection that is d is nothing but the ring deflection by how much actually this has actually has undergone changes. So, if an empty circular cross section is described into an ellipse then p x r x is equal to p y r y. So, p x r x is equal to p y r y p x is the pressure in the x direction p y is the pressure in the uh, y direction. So, p x r x is equal to p y r y is equal to p r and uh, this is uh, uh, you know uh, this is the uh, you know for a empty circular cross section if it actually undergoes uh, a deflection in the form of an ellipse then uh, you know this issue is actually uh, is valid. Now, what we need to do is that uh, in order to calculate the minimum soil cover the horizontal pressure of the pipe on soil at uh, spring line uh, is nothing but p x is equal to that is spring line is nothing but that mid height is equal to p x uh, uh, p, p x is equal to p y r r where uh, p y is equal to uh, gamma h into gamma h plus w by 2 h square that is due to uh, dead load plus live load. So, for d is equal to 0 percent uh, by using uh, uh, this one uh, where d is equal to 0 then p by a is equal to 1 that is a, a, a ratio of radii is equal to 1 and for uh, 2 percent uh, deflection 5 percent uh, ring deflection 10 percent ring deflection we can say that one r, 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 r suffix r that is ratio of radii uh, is equal to uh, 1.13, 1.35 and 1.83 this 1 point ring the r ratio of radii is 1.83 for ring deflection of 10 percent. So, uh, the loading is uh, p y is equal to gamma h plus w by 2 h square that is due to the red light that is sulphate of the soil and plus uh, live load and the activated uh, activating horizontal stress on the pipe uh, on soil at spring line is p x is equal to r r into gamma h plus uh, w by 2 h square. Now, the resisting force for this uh, soil strength and spring line is nothing but sigma x is equal to k p into gamma into h plus d by 2, where gamma is the unit weight of the soil and k p is nothing but the passive earth pressure coefficient which is actually 1 plus sin phi by 1 minus sin phi that is the Rankine's uh, uh, you know, earth pressure coefficient we have taken. So, here 
the resisting uh, uh, stress is actually nothing but sigma x is equal to kp into gamma into h plus d by 2 Act, uh, the activating horizontal stress on the pipe at soil spring line is nothing but px is equal to rr into gamma h plus w by 2 h square by uh, what we so this is again uh, the same issue is actually de described here the case one wheel load directly on the or the pipe where the horizontal stress applied by the pipe on soil at mid height of the pipe is given here that is uh, the, the spring line uh, and then the resting force applied by the soil on the at the mid height of the pipe is sigma x is equal to kp into gamma into h plus d by 2 where d is the diameter of the pipe and uh, phi is the friction angle of the soil and kp is the passive uh, you know the passive coefficient passive earth pressure coefficient w is the wheel load and h is the minimum cover and gamma is the unit weight of soil d is the deflection of the pipe ring as a fraction of the pipe diameter and r, r suffix r is nothing but uh, uh, 1 plus uh, uh, d by 1 minus d whole cube. Now by equating this uh, uh, pressure applied by the uh, uh, you know this px which is nothing but uh, by equating this uh, uh, pressure which is uh, applied by the uh, operated uh, applied by uh, you know this px and then resisted by the kx pressure applied by uh, you know the px and then resisted by the passive earth pressure coefficient offered by the soil by equating the horizontal stress applied by pipe on soil and resisting force applied by soil uh, at mid height of the pipe by equating them what we get is that uh, you know we get the expression for w is equal to 2 gamma h cube into kp by kp by rr into 1 plus d by 2 h minus 1 so if you look into this for different uh, for for value of phi and for value of a typical wheel load and uh, different uh, ring deflections and uh, we uh, we can actually get the typical schematic variation of h the soil cover and uh, with the so increase in soil cover uh, can actually allow us to actually have accommodate uh, higher wheel loads and uh, let us say that you know for a ring deflection of uh, say 0% that means that uh, the soil cover of this much 2 units is required and then wherein uh, the maximum wheel load is allowed is about uh, 10 units of the maximum wheel load. So by equating the uh, you know this uh, px is equal to sigma x we have got w is equal to 2 gamma h cube into kp by rr into 1 plus d by 2 h minus 1. So the schematic variation of h with w for different uh, ring deflections actually is given in this slide. Now as the soil cover decreases the live load pressure on the buried pipe increases. So we look into that as the soil cover decreases the live load pressure on the buried pipe increases. So the pressure transmitted to the pipe will keep on getting enhanced. So there exists a minimum height of soil cover we have to see that the minimum soil, minimum height of soil cover is ensured by all means. If the soil cover is less than minimum the surface low load may damage the pipe and less obvious the, is that is a minimum height of soil cover for dead load and the weight of soil only. So uh, is minimum height of soil cover for dead load uh, that is weight of soil only. So uh, now the, in the while considering now we have taken uh, uh, you know the wheel load right on the type now the wheel load is uh, one of the uh, on one of the sides of the pipe. So let us assume that we are actually having a flexible pipe and the wheel load is on the towards the left hand side which is actually shown and it actually has got load is exacted on a like a trapezium and then it is actually transferred to the type of the pipe like this. So uh, now uh, the deformation is caused by the punch through of a truncated pyramid of soil under the wheel. So the deformation is actually caused because of the punch through which actually happens to the truncated pyramid of soil under the wheel. If the ring stiffness is not adequate, if the ring stiffness is not adequate, the top of the pipe inverts and the, as the wheel rolls across the pipe. So the top of the pipe will get inverted and the, as the wheel rolls on the pipe. So you can see that the maximum moment uh, exerted is nothing but m is equal to 0 0.022 pr square. So, uh, so this uh, deformation is actually caused by the punching uh, mode of uh, failure and uh, through uh, it is like a truncated pyramid of soil under the uh, wheel. 
So the inversion is triggered by the uh, maximum moment uh, which is uh, given by as uh, m is equal to 0 0.022 uh, p r square at about 10 degrees to the right of the center line. So when the load is on the left hand side the maximum moment actually gets uh, you know uh, mobilized on the right hand side of the pipe and this moment causes the bending stress uh, where sigma is equal to mc by i. Uh, so the uh, the axial uh, this thing axial stress axial component is neglected here because of its magnitude. So the, uh, the, the maximum the moment m causes the bending stress sigma is equal to mc, mc by i. So the ring compression uh, compressive stress is nothing but sigma is equal to p by 2 into d by t p d by 2 t for flexible pipe where p is equal to gamma h uh, is actually negligible. So by simplifying what we get is that p is equal to uh, you know p is nothing but the vertical pressure on buried pipe due to the surface wheel load uh, which is actually uh, 30 into sigma r where sigma uh, 30 into sigma y where sigma y is nothing but the yield stress in steel if it is a steel pipe if it is a plastic pipe the yield stress in plastic respective part of plastic pipe need to be used into d by t whole square. So uh, this is for within the elastic range in the ductile hinge range then it is uh, 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 p is equal to 30 into uh, sigma y into d by t whole square. So uh, here where uh, sigma y is nothing but the uh, yield stress in steel and uh, uh, so d by t is nothing but the ring flexibility, ring flexibility which is actually defined as uh, you know diameter as well as the wall thickness of the uh, plane pipe. So for example if you are having a um, about uh, uh, 3.8 uh, uh, you know 3.8 uh, meters of pipe having a thickness of about uh, uh, you know something like about uh, 20 mm of uh, thickness then the d by t ratio is about 190 or so that indicates that you know the pipe is actually having very high uh, you know ring flexibility and pipe is said to be a flexible in nature classified as the you know very flexible pipe. So uh, where d by t is equal to ring flexibility which is nothing but the ratio of diameter to the wall thickness for plane pipes. So sometimes uh, for cooling water pipelines and all where uh, the flexibility uh, ring flexibility will be of the order of uh, 180 to 180 to 200 and uh, the minimum soil cover uh, for uh, considerations uh, now we are actually trying to look uh, when the wheel load uh, is actually on the uh, you know the live, uh, the live load on the towards the left of the pipe. So what we have done is that we actually have got uh, uh, with uh, uh, you know this particular p is equal to 30 into sigma y into d by t uh, whole square and uh, with that after having obtained now we can actually calculate the wheel load w on the compacted granular soil punches out a pyramid with slopes of about 1 inch to 1 horizontal to 2 vertical with the slope angle is equal to about 37 degrees per pressure on the pipe is approximately uh, can be approximated as uh, p is equal to uh, w by b plus h into l plus h this is nothing but uh, where h is the, the cover uh, you know minimum cover. So by solving 1 and 2 so this is 1 where uh, uh, by solving 1 and 2 what we get is that the minimum cover h can be calculated. So uh, when we whenever the wheel load is actually on the uh, you know not on the right on top of the pipe then you know we need to use this particular expression and by using uh, the equations which are actually given in 1 and 2 by solving 1 and 2 the minimum soil cover h can be uh, determined. Now for typical uh, granular uh, backfill based on the analysis confirmed by the test minimum cover is about h uh, that minimum cover need to be ensured that d by 10 that means that if you are having a d is equal to about 4 meters then uh, minimum cover about uh, 4 by 10 about 4 meters uh, cover has to be ensured that is uh, 4, uh, 4 by 10 that is about 0.4 meters cover yeah, uh, uh, and often uh, specified minimum allowable is nothing but h is equal to d by 6. Uh, but uh, this implies for, per, uh, for pref very perfectly flexible ring. So if you are having a flexible ring like uh, you know we discussed about d by t is equal to about uh, 190 or 200. So for that actually the minimum cover which is actually allowable is uh, nothing but h is equal to d by 6. In fact the pipes have ring stiffnesses and so provide resistance to dead load collapse. Now after having discussed about the minimum cover requirement from the uh, live load consideration point of view 
wherein we actually have discussed the wheel load right on top of the pipe and wheel load, wheel load location on the left of the pipe. When the wheel load is located left on the pipe, uh, we said that the inversion of the pipe takes place, the moment is actually mobilized on the towards the right side of the pipe and uh, with that actually we have calculated what is the minimum soil uh, requirement. So where for flexible pipes we said that uh, the minimum cover is nothing but uh, about D by 6 need to be ensured. Uh, the, so the next issue we need to uh, think about is the pipe flotation. See the possibility of the pipe flotation exists when the pipeline is uh, constructed in areas which will be inundated and uh, such as the stream crossings and flood plains and high ground water areas. When such uh, conditions exist evaluate the possible uh, possibility of the pipe flotation. So whenever uh, also we need to consider the effect of the you know the uh, fluid pressure uh, on the pipe due to uh, let us say if it is in a rainfall areas. In a rainfall area if, uh, if uh, rainfall prone areas if uh, the pipes are actually installed then we need to even consider the effect of the fluid pressure on the uh, you know uh, on the, uh, the integrity of the pipe. So the possibility of the pipe flotation exists when the pipeline is constructed in areas which will be inundated uh, such as the stream crossings and flood plains and high ground water table or it can be inundated due to the diversion of rainfall water into the uh, trench which actually was used for installing the pipes. When such conditions exist the possibility of the pipe flotation need to be evaluated. So the buoyancy of the pipeline depends upon the weight of the pipe, weight of the volume of the water displaced by the pipe and the weight of the liquid load carried by the pipe and weight of the backfill. So the buoyancy of the pipeline depends upon the weight of the pipe and weight of the volume of water displaced by the pipe and the weight of liquid load carried by the pipe and the weight of the backfill. So as a conservative analytical practice what one does is that the pipeline empty will be considered. This is for two reasons one is that so that the weight of the liquid will be considered as an additional safety factor and possibility of the pipeline is not being in use during the period of time it also accounts for that. So as a conservative analytical practice we consider that pipeline empty for two reasons one is that the weight of the liquid will be considered as an additional safety factor. So and the possibility of the pipeline not being in use during uh, the period of time of maintenance will also be uh, taken care. So in this uh, particular slide uh, a typical uh, you know wedge uh, failure which is actually shown and this is obtained based on the model test and if you are actually having a situation of water surface at this level and h is the embedded depth and uh, this is the diameter of the pipe and this is the wall thickness. And for granular soil with the shallow covers H less than 5D soil slips like a parabolic surface. So this was actually obtained from the model test data and this Z up to the mid depth of the mid depth of the pipe which is nothing but Z is equal to H plus D by 2. So Z is nothing but this is H and this is D so H plus D by 2 and the and this wedge is actually having a uh, two vertical and one horizontal this is the you know the wedge uh, which actually undergoes uh, you know the if this Q is actually more than W then the pipe actually subjected to flotation. So we need to ensure that uh, the W by Q is actually having at least uh, the factor of safety of 2 so that the flotation uh, issues can be addressed. Then D is the you know this uh, diameter and Z by 4 is the extent of the, the parabolic uh, uh, parab the parabolic width. So this area of parabola is about uh, z, z square by 6, z square by 6. So uh, this is the uh, you know minimum soil cover computation for bionic soil under water to prevent flotation of an empty pipe. So here the pipe is actually considered as the uh, empty, empty, in an empty condition. So the buoyancy Q on the empty pipe is the weight of the water displaced. So it is nothing but Q is equal to comma W into pi D square by 4 and D is the diameter which actually acts upward. And weight of soil is the weight of the soil wedge bounded by the soil slip planes at an angle equal to the soil friction angle. For cohesionless soil a reasonable soil friction angle assumed as 37 degrees for which soil slips at roughly 1 H to, uh, to, uh, to vertical uh, this is actually based on the model that is actually this inclination is assumed to be about 37 degrees which is also assumed to be equivalent to the friction angle. So the resisting force W is the nothing but the bionic weight of the soil cover uh, 
uh, that is hatched cross hatched which is actually given by so the resting force uh, is uh, taken in this particular zone so this rectangular portion and these uh, small portions which are shown in the hatched way and these are these parabolas here and these parabolas. So uh, the resting force W is the buoyant weight of soil cover that is the cross hatch is actually given by W is equal to gamma sub submerged into area. So uh, where uh, A is the area of the cross hatched area where D that, that, that area is given as DZ, D is the diameter and uh, Z uh, that is the total rectangular area plus Z square by 3 uh, minus uh, pi D square by 8. So, that is uh, these uh, two areas what we have considered is that this rectangular area DZ and DZ we have considered and then we have to take out this area. So we have, we have taken out this area and then we added this area and we added uh, uh, we have taken entire area and then we have taken this, this area we subtracted and we added these two areas. So with that what we have got is that DZ plus Z square by 3 minus pi D square by 8. So, because of that the area of the uh, area shown in the crossed uh, hatched portion is we considered and with that multiplying with gamma submerged unit weight that is uh, let us say that if the soil is actually having 20 kilo per meter cube minus 10 so about 10 kilo per meter cube is the unit weight of the submerged soil into area. So a safety factor uh, is recommended generally uh, factor of safety of 2 so for design uh, purposes uh, increase the calculated h by a factor of 2. Suppose if you have got say 1 meter then we have to provide about 2 meters uh, with a factor of safety of 2. So uh, minimum cover of granular soil under water so this is uh, what is the minimum cover h of granular soil under water to prevent the flotation uh, when pipe is empty. So the empty pipe floats if q exceeds y so the q exceeds w the empty flight empty, empty pipe floats if q exceeds w so equating q is equal to w what we have got at equilibrium q is equal to gamma w into pi d square by 4 equal to w into gamma w into dz into z uh, uh, cube by 3 minus pi d cube by 8 by equating the, them and simplifying we get z is equal to 0 0.9 d so z is equal to 0 0.9 d which implies that uh, approximated as d so um, this is approximated as when z is equal to h plus d by 2 when you substitute that we get h is equal to d by 2. So with a factor of safety of 2 uh, provide that h is equal to d. So when we provide h is equal to d then uh, the you know that is the minimum soil cover required from flotation consideration point of view from flotation consideration point of view. Now pipe uplift what is the uplift force which is experienced by the pipe see analysis for determination of the force required to uplift the pipe in the soil is also useful. So Q is the force that lifts the pipe so the pipe uplift equation is given by sigma P is equal to Kp gamma into H, H plus D by 2. So this is nothing but uh, uh, by sigma P the pipe uplift equation is nothing but uh, which is lifted by the uh, soil. Uh, is say sigma p is equal to gamma kp into gamma into h plus d by 2 and with that uh, we can actually write uh, by, uh, by substituting and uh, simplifying we can write that uh, uh, you know uh, 3 q by gamma d square is equal to h by d plus 2 whole square minus 3.428. So with that uh, what we get is that we get the pipe of lift equation and uh, if you are actually having uh, you know the uh, height of soil cover h is greater than 5 times d uh, that is where h by d greater than d then you know uh, the Terzaghi model need to be adopted and uh, if the height of soil cover is h and greater than 5 d inverted Terzaghi model for uplift uh, force and pipe buried under high soil cover heads uh, need to be adopted. So here in this uh, Terzaghi by pipe uh, inverted Terzaghi model where the, a, bow, a bow wave of soil is formed. Uh, as the pipe pours uh, up through the soil the shear planes uh, that is soil slip planes do not break out uh, at the ground surface. So the shear planes they actually do not break out at the ground surface. So from the analysis at h by for h by d is equal to h by d greater than 5 we can actually obtain q is equal to 20 into gamma d square. So for uh, you know for the uh, piles which are the pipes which are actually embedded 
with uh, embedded depths uh, greater than 5 h by d greater than 5 a bow way of soil is formed as the pipe flows up through the soil and the shear planes basically they do not break out at the ground surface. So from an analysis point of view when h by d greater than 5 the q is equal to 20 gamma d square is the computed. So here in this particular figure which is actually shown here for the high h by d ratios that is h by d greater than 5 the inverted Terzaghi model is valid. So in that case the uplift force is actually calculated by using the expression given by uh, given uh, here it is nothing but q is equal to 20 gamma d square and uh, where gamma is the unit weight of soil and here uh, as this is something like a bow wave of the soil is formed as the pipe post plows through the soil and the shear planes do not break out at the ground surface. So what are the you know remediation measures for uh, you know preventing or mitigating uh, pipe flotation the buoyancy effects are probably the greatest concern in areas such as uh, uh, flood plains and estuaries where the massive liquefaction could take place in a major earthquake also. So the following recommendations uh, may be considered uh, to minimize the buoyancy effects pipelines may be encased with concrete pipes to reduce the buoyancy effects but the increased diameter will also increase the internal lateral drag force on pipeline during the lateral spreading due to liquefaction. So pipelines may be encased with concrete uh, pipes to reduce the buoyancy effects but the increased diameter will also increase the lateral drag force on the pipeline during lateral spreading during liquefaction. The concrete weights or gravel filled blankets can be utilized to provide additional resistance to buoyancy. Concrete weights or concrete blocks or gravel filled blankets can be used to provide additional resistance to buoyancy. So buoyancy effect can also be minimized by shallow burial of pipeline above the ground water table. So instead of taking below the ground water table the pipelines can be kept above ground water table and where the uplift is the main concern anchors may be provided with a close spacing of about 150 meters to prevent uplift. So an appropriate anchoring system need to be designed and wherein you know this you know the flotation of the pipeline can be restrained. So the two popular issues one is that anchors use of anchors the other one is that to keep the pipelines at shallow level itself and you know the other one is that encasement with concrete pipes these are the issues which you know can be used the recommendations can be used for minimize the buoyancy effects on the pipeline. The another issue which we have said that if the when when you have got uh, the pipelines which are actually embedded in a trench narrow trenches are in uh, uh, in the embankment uh, conditions and we said that uh, they uh, when we are actually having the uh, you know these uh, fills there is a possibility that uh, uh, below the water table uh, they can be subjected to liquefaction because of the seismic uh, perturbances. So if there is any possibility of soil liquefaction the flotation will be a major concern and additional considerations are required. So soil can liquefy and if it is saturated and shaken if the density is less than about 80 percent of the modified proctor density. So the soil can liquefy and you know then you know once the soil liquefies the resistance to all these uplift and all those things cannot be expected because the liquefied mass will lose its, its strength. So the shaking can be result of you know any seismic activity and if the soil is completely saturated to the ground level and the pipe is empty so there will be little resistance to flotation and the empty pipe will raise through the liquid soil liquid soil so at the onset of liquefaction what will happen is that because of the you know any seismic activity and if the soil is completely saturated to the ground level and the pipe is empty and there will be a little resistance to the preventing the pipe from floating and then the empty pipe will raise through the liquid soil so this actually can lead to you know the failure of the pipelines and many case studies actually have been reported in the failure of pipelines and manhole covers due to liquefaction particularly when they are actually embedded below the ground level and particularly in sandy type of soils and with when they are subjected to this in high water table areas when they are subjected to this sort of very high magnitude of these earthquake forces. Uh, the damages have been reported. So here in this particular uh, uh, slide where the a typical uh, pipeline which is actually subjected to 
uh, you know the so called uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, liquefaction uh, uh, has been shown here. So, here uh, the pipeline and this is the uh, liquefied backfill which is actually shown and H is the uh, you know from the water table uh, that is this is below the water table and this portion is actually above the water table. So, this is the soil weight which actually offers the resistance and uh, pressure distribution on uh, pipe in a liquefied soil. So, buckling at the bottom is actually possible. So, the distribution of the pressure uh, at the onset of liquefaction is uh, estimated like this which is actually shown schematically here maximum at the base and uh, minimum at the top and uh, the compared to base uh, the side magnitude is less. So, if the embedment uh, liquefies when a circular pipe is empty the ring may be subjected to the hydrostatic pressure shown in this. So, this is the you know the so called hydrostatic pressures momentarily will be subjected and that, that can lead to the damage of the pipe. So, the, in this particular slide what we have seen is that uh, you know this is the countering uh, resistance and this is the hydrostatic pressure distribution at the onset of liquefaction uh, due to some seismic uh, perturbance. Now, if somehow the flotation is prevented the catastrophic collapse may occur when the bar from the bottom uh, according to the classical buckling equation. So, if uh, somehow the flotation is prevented the catastrophic collapse may lead to the uh, uh, buckling and uh, this is given by P r cube by 3 P r cube by E i is equal to 3 P r cube by E i is equal to 3 which is nothing but h is equal to uh, E by uh, 4 gamma into T by R to the raise 3 this is for plane pipe that means this gives what is the height height H of the water table above the bottom of the steel pipe in the embedded uh, embedment. So, lose so so, uh, so lose that it can liquefy and cause the catastrophic uh, ring collapse. So, this gives actually the height uh, you know of water table above the bottom of the steel pipe in embedded embedded depth. So, that the so the, the that is the soil is so loose that it can liquefy and cause catastrophic ring collapse. So, we can actually calculate from the combining with the buckling equation. So, we with that if that is uh, uh, you know if this uh, depth is calculated and if we can ensure adequate factor of safety then we can actually say that the pipe can be prevented from liquefaction. So, some appropriate uh, preventive division uh, uh, you know the remediation measure need to be designed if it is actually prone for uh, you know uh, effect due to flotation effect due to liquefaction. So, if somehow the, uh, the flotation is prevented by catastrophic collapse may occur uh, from the bottom according to the buckling equation which we have given. So, thus depth is nothing but uh, is actually calculated is the height of water table above the bottom uh, for a steel pipe embedded in uh, loose uh, sand and uh, that can liquefy and cause a catastrophic ring collapse. So, here uh, uh, for the uh, liquefaction uh, so here what in this particular slide uh, a typical forces acting on a pipe in a liquefied soil is shown here. So, this is the saturated soil and this is the uh, you know pipe uh, and uh, we have uh, this is the FSP is nothing but the self weight of the pipe and FBP. Uh, which is nothing but the force due to buoyancy and F, uh, FEP that is the uh, you know the force acting on the structure and uh, this is the weight of the soil weight of the soil. So, what will happen is that when the at the onset of liquefaction uh, the forces acting are actually shown here wherein the shear stresses will acting downwards here and the up, upwards here and then resistance offered by this prism in this downward direction. So, this tends to go up and then this is these all forces will get mobilized. So, the rest the resistant forces actually inhibiting the uplift force uh, due to buoyancy that is uh, F uh, B P are provided by the weight of soil weight of the pipe the self weight of the pipe itself that is F S P uh, which is acting downwards and weight of the overlying soil that is W S P which is acting downwards and, uh, and the shear developed in the soil that is F S P P that is uh, here the shear developed in the soil. However, in the case so, so all downward forces are shear developed in the soil and weight of the soil above the pipe and uh, the sulphate of the pipe. The rest are actually in the direction of buoyancy is the pressure applied and uh, the buoyancy thing. So, uh, 
the however in the event of soil liquefaction during an earthquake the shear contribution could be reduced significantly. So, the FSPP, FSPP component will be very very marginal. So, the resistant forces inhibiting the uplift force due to buoyancy are uh, basically provided by the weight of the pipe and weight of overlaying soil and the shear developed in the soil. And however, in the event of soil liquefaction during an earthquake the shear contribution could be reduced significantly. So, in addition the excess pore water pressure at the invert of the pipe can also contribute to the uplift uh, force acting on the structure that is FEPP shown in the figure. So, which is uh, you know the uh, excess pore water pressure uh, which is actually uh, the excess pore water pressure at the invert of the pipe can also contribute to the uplift force and which actually can lead to you know the flotation of the pipe. So, when there is a positive net uplift force uh, the pipe may float as a result. So, when there is a net positive uh, you know uplift force acting in this direction. So, then there is a the pipe can result in the flotation. So, F net is nothing but F B P that is uh, F B P uh, which is uh, nothing but uh, the buoyancy force acting in this direction F E P P minus. So, F, P, F E P P plus F B P P minus F S P that is this sulphate of the pipe and F S P P plus F W S P. So, F net pressure uh, when it is positive then uh, the pipe will be subjected to uplift force uh, and the pipe may float as a result. So, these uh, case studies actually have uh, reported that these issues are quite, quite common uh, when, uh, when we are actually install these buried pipes in uh, liquefaction prone areas. So, in this particular slide what we have understood is that at the onset of uh, liquefaction if the uh, you know if there is a positive net uplift force uh, the pipe uh, may float as a result. So, uh, the for the, the two contributing uh, forces for uh, uh, you know uh, causing the pipe to lift are the one is the buoyant uh, weight of the pipe that is F uh, B P uh, that is the uplift force due to buoyancy that is due to uh, because water table is here the uplift force due to buoyancy and second thing is that the excess pore water pressure uh, at the invert of the pipe can also contribute. So, this excess pore water pressure at the onset of liquefaction momentarily will be very high and uh, then the dissipation actually takes place. But at that point of attenuation of this uh, you know the liquefaction the excess pore water pressure is so high and uh, then uh, the positive net effect up uplift force will be very high and will lead to the uh, pipe flotation. So, there are many methods uh, uh, to restrain this uh, uh, liquefaction, uh, the liquefaction effect on the buried pipes. So, for this actually some investigators uh, uh, like Ling et al they are actually working on uh, uh, you know evolving at uh, the use of uh, geo grids for uh, as a confinement the confining the gravel confining the gravel that means that a placement of gravel around the pipe and uh, which is actually confined with uh, you know a geo grid. So, uh, if some means uh, some resistant is also considered in the analysis by the geo grid which is actually offered and uh, there are also some uh, you know uh, uh, you know uh, techniques which are actually tried in the literature like using uh, the synthetic materials like geo grid as a straps uh, at intermittently at certain spacing and uh, the in uh, preventing the you know the pipe flotation issues and all. So, in this particular uh, slide a typical uh, uh, mitigation technique uh, using uh, gravels and geo grid where uh, a gravel confined uh, gravel counterweight confined uh, geo grid is used to counter uh, counter the flotation at the onset of liquefaction. So, how these things are actually tested is that uh, we actually have discussed the physical modeling. So, these uh, you know these uh, situations actually have to be modeled and then you know once by understanding the phenomenon they, they you know the design methods can be evolved and then uh, can lead to the design in the field. So, uh, after having discussed about uh, these issues now uh, another important is that uh, if you are actually having these uh, steel pipes the corrosion is another issue the corrosion of the buried pipes. So, three environmental agents usually exert strong influence on corrosion of the pipe uh, wall material in buried installations particularly the water or other fluid carried by the pipe and the soil in contact with the buried pipe if it is in saline in nature then you know it can lead to the extensive corrosion 
and the ground water if the ground water is actually having high chlorides and sulfates then there can also can uh, can can cause a cause of concern for the uh, corrosion so the three environmental agents that are actually usually exerts the strong influence of corrosion which we have discussed one is water or other fluid uh, which is carried by the pipe so these uh, corrosions of the buried pipes which are actually shown here uh, and uh, the the protections are basically done by application coating and cathodic protection and cathodic protection is basically proven to be very successful in providing leak free uh, high pressure oil and natural gas uh, pipelines throughout the us and uh, the other one is that coatings can be used to limit inhibit corrosion or other forms of deterioration in both concrete and uh, steel pipes and type and extent of the coating depend upon the service environment and coal tar uh, enamel and wrapping has been used successfully uh, in uh, uh, USA for uh, several decades. So epoxies and urethane among other you have become popular in more recent times. So in uh, recently also in India uh, these uh, urethane coated uh, uh, you know corrosion uh, uh, protection systems are actually in place. So this is the cathodic protection which is actually shown in this particular slide. So uh, now we actually look into a case study where uh, a particular uh, buried pipe of about uh, uh, you know uh, 3 3.8 meters diameter embedded in a uh, soil cover at a with a soil cover about 1.5 meter that is about uh, d by 2 and the, the uh, so the loading considerations one need to consider what we have understood is that the load due to pressure generated with the flow and external pressure by the fluid if the pipe is uh, submerged under water and external pressure generated by the weight of the earth and live loads on buried pipes and load due to thermal expansion at earth, earthquakes. So uh, the load due to thermal expansion at earthquakes and external pressure by the fluid if the pipe is submerged under water in the, in the eventuality of a, in this particular case study we will try to look into it uh, what will be the effect of the external pressure uh, which is actually arised because of the onset of rainfall. So this is uh, you know typical installation of a flexible pipe at the site where the trench is actually made and this is the natural ground water table and uh, the pipe is actually made with uh, the spirals here which are actually prevented these are used for uh, you know retaining uh, the shape uh, temporarily but once they are actually commissioned then the, these, these, uh, these will be removed. So this is a typical uh, strata you can see that uh, having a certain amount of uh, fines and cohesion in it but the ground water table is actually here. So um, this is uh, one of the pipes so like this there are about four uh, number of pipes which are actually shown here. So this is uh, you know the, uh, the other amount of pipes where so you can see that the how important is the soil support. So in the event of uh, changes in the uh, you know the deformations in the pipe so the gaps can actually arise so, so these gaps actually can also lead to so these are actually due to uh, some uh, increase in uh, pressures or deflections which actually takes place. So the ring deflections are available uh, are uh, evident actually here in this particular uh, uh, figure. So this is the same uh, figure which is actually modified here. So uh, this is a typical uh, case here pipe, pipe 1, pipe 2, pipe 3, pipe 4 where uh, in this area what has been done is that uh, the rainfall actually has been simulated and then the water actually has. Uh, uh, you know uh, has been uh, water flow has been simulated when this has been done what actually happened is that uh, uh, pipe 1 and pipe 2 were found to actually under submerged water and pipe 2 is actually already with uh, uh, internal pressure of about uh, 500 uh, kilonewton per meter square but the pipe 1 was actually found to experience distress due to high external pressure. So that we will see how that actually uh, you know can be uh, seen through a video. So here in this uh, particular the, uh, issue the rainfall intensity which actually happened at the site is actually simulated. Uh, then uh, it, it can be seen that as the rainfall is actually happening over a duration the water table actually raises up to this level. So you can see that the both the pipes are actually under submergence. Then we will see the other case this is again with a trench in this case also you can see that the pipeline actually. Uh, submerged with the water table as we go down you can see that the water table diminishes as the rainfall is uh, simulated you can see that the water table raises and stands above the pipe 1 and pipe 2. Now we will see the third case 
So in this case uh, a remedial measure as is in place uh, with uh, wherein uh, a filter layer actually has been placed at this level. So uh, this is the you know the application of soil mechanics wherein uh, like in ethan dams a filter layer actually has if it is induced what will happen is that it actually prevents the water table and maintains the water table right uh, you know uh, at the bottom of the uh, pipe and which actually prevents uh, you know reduces the external pressure and it will prevent the pipe from losing uh, losing the support uh, from the soil. So in that case what will actually happen is that the stresses have become uh, very uh, high and it led to very high amount of uh, uh, you know non-uniform stresses and which actually has led to the failure. So this is the situation where the water table is drained uh, diverted with uh, you know the so called uh, a drainage layer which is actually placed suiting the site condition. So uh, the typical failure uh, which actually has actually happened at the site uh, uh, here is actually shown here. So here this particular pipe uh, after excavation is actually found like this. So this is because of the at the onset of uh, you know rainfall inundation you can see that the pipe actually has undergone a buckling failure and 3.3 meter diameter 3.8 meter diameter pipe which actually has undergone a distress. So these issues of loading on the buried conduits is very very severe particularly these flexible pipes with flexibility ratios about d by t of the order of 200 they have to be adequate care has to be taken in the design by taking these you know appropriate loading considerations. So, uh, so in this uh, particular uh, module what we have understood is that uh, what are the different types of uh, pipes there are two types flexible pipes and uh, rigid pipes and then we also discussed the loading uh, theories Marston's loading theory for different considerations and then what are the different types of loads and uh, what are the different type of loading conditions. Then we also discussed the minimum soil cover requirement and pipe flotation uh, particularly due to buoyancy alone and due to the liquefaction. Uh, effects.